you have a covenant or do you have a contract type of marriage? There's a big difference between the two. And in today's episode of the Husband Coaches Corner, we are going to unpack the difference between the two and hopefully get you moving on the right track. Let's go. You are listening to the Husband Coaches Corner, the podcast designed to teach husbands how to love their wife each and every day and become better men in the process. I'm your host, Chris Scott, and welcome back to another episode. Welcome back to another episode here on the Husband Coaches Corner. Today, we are talking about covenant versus contract and what type of marriage do you have? Now, if you have a contract marriage, you know it and we're going to unpack it. And if you have a covenant marriage, you know it and we're going to unpack that as well. Now, just to you know, give the, the answers up front, a covenant type of marriage is so much more important than a contractual type of marriage. All right. There are a lot of men and a lot of women uh, marriages out there that are just so surrounded in the contractual realm that they miss out on the ability to really love in the covenantial type of way. And that's what we're going to really be unpacking today. So we're going to just go ahead and dive right in. But um, if you are at any point throughout this episode, you're like, you know what? I need to figure out how to get more into a covenantial type of marriage and you need some help and you want some coaching, then check the description box below. There's a link to a free consult. You can sign up and I will show up and we'll talk about this. All right. So you don't have to struggle alone. All right. I'll come alongside you and, and give you some assistance in areas where maybe you just don't see. All right. Now, covenantial versus contractual marriage. All right. Now, just to be clear, when I talk about contractual marriage, I'm not saying like you can't go get a marriage license from the courthouse. All right. Or you shouldn't get married in the courthouse. Uh, No, that is not what I'm saying. All right. What I'm talking about is the intent behind your marriage and how you view your marriage. All right. See, it breaks down into a few categories here, and I'm not going to cover all of them. I'm just going to cover some of them. The first one, if you have a covenantial marriage, then it is based on love and love as the verb, not love as the noun. All right. Love is something that you do. If you have a contractual marriage, meaning you are just looking at it as a business agreement, then it's based on law. That's it. And those are empty marriages, right? If you have a covenantial marriage, you'll be motivated by commitment. If you have a motivational or I'm sorry, if you have a covenantial marriage, meaning it's a covenant, you're going to be motivated by commitment. But if you have a contractual marriage, you're going to be motivated by compulsion. And the definition of compulsion, because I had to look it up just to make sure that I was making sense of the word It is the action or state of forcing or being forced to do something. Let that sink in for a minute. If you are in a contractual marriage, it's like you're being forced to do something. Now, before, you know, all you guys start to jump off the deep end and you're like, oh, yeah, see, my wife, she shouldn't be forcing me to do stuff because that means that we're in a contractual marriage uh, see, I shouldn't have a honey-do list and all these things. No, that, that that's not what I'm saying, right? What we're talking about is the motivation. If you feel like you have to do something and that's your motivation and that you're being forced to do it, then yeah, you, you're kind of missing the point. Now, one of the phrases that I hear a lot is happy wife, happy life. And I don't like that concept because it's not a true representation of being motivated out of love, being motivated out of commitment, right? That just means I'm doing stuff so that way I don't have problems. And that really falls in line of the contractual mindset of marriage. So uh, I want, you know, all you guys to just hear the fact that covenantial marriages are superior to contractual marriages. What's the next thing? So, A covenantial marriage, it assumes the relationship 
till death do us part. Now, this is critical, and I love this one. Pursuing the relationship until death do us part. Let that sink in. Like, that is what the whole purpose of finding ways to love your wife every day, becoming a better man in the process, right? These that That is the whole heart of this podcast and what I'm hoping sinks in and resonates with all the men who listen in on this podcast. Because if you don't have a till death do us part mindset, man, you're really missing out because you probably have the opposite of that or the contractual mindset method of that, which is you prepare for your marriage to fail. You know, there's a lot of people that I've talked with, men that I've coached, that they were under the impression that their marriage, it was going to fail. Now, thankfully, you know, I had the opportunity to speak into their marriage and and some of these men, they recovered from it, right? Uh, The mindset of preparing for your marriage to fail, meaning if things aren't going right, then they probably never will. Uh, I've heard the conversation of we just weren't the right match for each other. And to some degree, there's a little bit of truth in that, right? But what the world wants to tell us and what our social norms would like to tell us is if you argue all the time, you're probably not a right match. As opposed to figuring out what the unmet need is that leads to the arguments. So that way you can become a more cohesive couple. So I'm not a fan of those statements, but the point here is if you have a till death do us part mindset and you're motivated by commitment and everything you do is based on love, you just build all of those things together. And as you move forward in your marriage, just think of the blessings that you will have in a covenantial type of marriage versus a contractual marriage, which is based on law, which laws, they can change, they can be revoked. And most of the time, you're not even the authority over the law. So that's a bad thing, right? And then there's the motivated by compulsion, which means you are being forced to do something. So the law is forcing me to do this. You see how this is starting to go down the line of, oh man. And then When you start preparing for that marriage to fail because you don't want to do the thing that you're being forced to do by law, yeah, that just starts to get that much more frustrating. And that's the purpose of us having this conversation today of the contractual marriage versus the covenantial marriage. Now, I'm going to cover two more things on this and then we'll we'll land the plane. So... The sec or the next thing in line of the covenantial marriage would be what's mine is yours. Now, I, I feel like there's a lot of immature marriages or younger marriages that struggle with this. I don't see too many. Uh, I don't want to say older marriages, but people who have been married a little bit longer, right? More seasoned in their marriage. Uh, this isn't as big of a issue as it is in early marriage, especially when you are taking uh, two households and combining them into one, right? So if you have your place and she has her place and you're trying to combine them into one, uh, the things that were yours, depending on whose house you guys decide to move into, right? The things that were yours versus the things that are hers, uh, you start to say, no, that's mine. And then you start to segregate and segment your stuff uh, as if she can't have any authority or opinion over it. All right. Um, In in fact, to some degree, I struggle with this a little bit. Uh, I like to, in my wife's words, hoard wires. Now, when I talk about wires, I'm talking about like cables. So USB chargers from cell phones and and, and stuff like that. I have a lot of them. We've gone through a lot of cell phones and I keep the cables to those. Uh, I have a lot of other USB cords. Now for me, I do a lot of tech stuff and um, it helps to have extra cables in my mind. It works. I've already had this conversation with my wife. She understands that. 
but I do have a lot of them. I acknowledge that. Now, that doesn't mean that my wife doesn't have an opinion and that she doesn't have authority. So, in fact, I get rid of some of those cables uh, and I don't do it because I'm being forced out of compulsion. I do it because I am committed to loving my wife. That's the verb. So the moral of the story here and what I really want you to hear is you have to have what's mine is yours as a mindset in marriage as opposed to protecting what is yours, right? If you are constantly, like if I had, if I wanted to protect and say, no, I have to keep all of my wires and you better not touch my wires, you better not move my wires, that's going to lead to some harsh resentment and that's more of the contractual marriage, right? Meaning that my wife has no say over some of the things that are going on that I, you know, really should have no problem with releasing to her or uh, allowing her to have that um, that flexibility to say, hey, you know what? You got too many. Now, once upon a time, that used to be offensive to me. I'm not going to lie. When my wife would tell me you have too many wires, I would kind of tune her out and be like, yeah, whatever. Um, now we kind of just laugh about it because, uh, there's times when she comes and asks me like, Hey, Chris, do you have, and then I'm like, well, let me go to my index of wires. Uh, now to be fair to my wife, she's not upset that I have the wires. What she is more frustrated with in regards to that is I don't organize them well. They're just in a, um, like one of those reusable tote bags that you can buy from a grocery store. It's in one of those. Uh, And and every time she or I need to get a wire, I have to pull out the snake chain mess that's in there uh, to find a cable. Now, in her defense, I also have some old cables like to Zooms, uh, you know, the old Microsoft uh, MP3 player that they tried to come out with. I have that cable in there. And I know that it's still in there because I sent it the other day and it's, it's just funny. Like, I don't even know where the zoom is. Uh, not that I would use it. So I could easily get rid of that cable right now. The point that I'm making here again is if you know that you have something similar to what I just explained, where it's a, this is a, my thing, this is mine, leave it alone. Don't touch it. Don't say anything about it. You have no, no right to say anything about it then you are probably leaning more towards the contractual side of marriage and, or at least the mindset contractual side of the mindset in marriage. And that's what we want to combat against. All right. And then the last thing that I will talk about before we land the plane is preparing for life together Man, preparing for life together. I have talked about this in my previous podcast, when I talked about the vision, what is your vision for your marriage? Because when you have a covenantal type of marriage where you are uh, being loving, you are committed, you are living with a death to us part or a till us part mindset, as well as what's mine is yours, which means you're freely giving the, out of generosity, right? Out of the, the, the love of your heart, um, And then you start to prepare for life together. That's a big deal. That's having a vision. What are you going to do together as husband and wife? Not what are you going to do? What what is your five-year plan? You know, I want to be a multimillionaire. That's great for you. But where does your wife fit into that? Oh, she'll just be on my side. Well, I don't know if that's a good plan. And that's something you should probably reconsider. So what is the life that you guys are going to have together? Like I know when I get out of the military, my wife and I, we're going to buy a home and my family is going to move in with us and we're going to establish a business uh, between my wife and I. We're going to establish it or establish a business. I know that this is the and that's the life that we have. And then we're also going to travel. We're going to travel the world, go to some uh, some tropical places, stuff like that. That is the vision that we have for life together. My wife and I talked about it. We're planning for it. We're preparing for it. All right. That's important because we have a covenantal marriage. Now, 
if you have a contractual mindset in your marriage, instead of preparing for life together, you're going to move into the preparing for life apart. And this is one of the pitfalls that I see all too often when I I counsel uh, or not counsel coach some men or just listen in on men who talk about their marriage. They talk about their wife not going where they're going, right? Where it's where they're saying things like, oh, yeah, I plan to go do this. And it's really a huge life decision that's going to alter the relationship between that the man and his wife, but they don't really care because they're like, yeah, whatever, life apart. And hear me clearly, I'm not talking about people who are in a season of life where uh, your work calls you to another location and you need to be in that location because that's understandable. What I'm talking about in this particular case are people who are intentionally leaving their wives or their wife is intentionally leaving their husband. See, that is a sign that you have a mindset that this is just a contractual thing and you're just there for whatever perks you may seem to get as opposed to the what's mine is yours mindset and preparing for life together. I don't know how else to explain or express that if you are not preparing to move forward with your wife, you are missing out on so, so much. And I don't want that for any listener of this podcast. All right. My heart and my goal, my intent behind this entire podcast is to help men see their marriage in a whole new light and transform the way that they think about their wives, the way that they think about their marriage, the way that they see their role as a husband, uh, that hopefully if you are in the contractual side of the house and in, in your mindset, that you start to move to the covenantial side and mindset. So we'll land the plane there and hopefully you got value. Now, again, if you have questions and you just want to go a little bit deeper, sign up for a free consult. Check the description box below. There's going to be a link that'll take you to my calendar. You can get on it and we'll sit down and we'll talk. We'll figure out what the best way forward is for you as a husband. I'll tailor a plan that's designed for your marriage. Or if you're like, hey, you know what? I just need to talk to someone and you have no one else to talk to, you can do that. I'll listen. I promise you. Uh, and, you know, we can go from there. But hopefully, again, this this episode resonated with you all. Uh, I really appreciate the support of all of the listeners and all the emails that I've been getting. I, I really do appreciate you guys. Um, and I'm thankful that I'm able to provide a blessing to you through this podcast, wherever you are picking it up from, because this is a worldwide podcast. And I just think that that's awesome that there are so many men looking uh, to seek improvement in their marriage. And it it truly is humbling and exciting. And I'm honored to to do that uh, and to come alongside you guys and, and walk. So until next time, I want you guys to find a way to love your wife every day day. Peace.